Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, when do I know that I'm ready to start looking for a programming job? So let's get into it. Well, that is a very hard question to answer because unfortunately, as with most things in this world, it depends and it, all, it depends on like a, a fairly wide range of factors. You see, one of the biggest problems with being someone who is going to give some type of meaningful advice to somebody who's trying to get into programming is that it's very hard for me to tell you something that is going to be true for every situation. I hope that you understand that, you know, when I try to give you some type of guidance, it's based on my experiences, it's based on, you know, my friends' experiences and my co-workers' experience and so forth. But there are, of course, always situations where this is not going to be true. I mean, what I'm going to tell you next is just based on what I think is probably the common case, which is, uh, you know, the common case for what's most likely going to end in a good result for you. But of course, when it comes to looking for jobs, I mean, there are extreme cases where, you know, people have I mean, they get a job like directly after school. I'm one of those people. I basically had a, like I, I was earmarked for my first intern position basically six months before I was done with my education and things of this nature happens, but it's not the normal case. So let's just cover that first and foremost. But if we're going to talk about more concretely where most people are going to be in a position where they're pretty much ready to take a job or start looking for a job is to start off by just checking your own skills. In other words, check your own relevancy. How do you do that? It's very simple. You go to the job postings in your region, you go to a job site and you search. And then you spend an afternoon or even more if you would like and you get yourself like a basic portfolio of how I just, get, just give yourself a, like an overview of what, what technologies are actually requested in your region. What seems to be the most popular things. I mean, don't, um, don't make the mistake to think that what's true for the internet, what's popular in the internet is the thing that is going to be popular in your region. Because I can tell you for a fact that the popularity of programming languages in the IT community does not necessarily reflect the popularity of the programming languages in the actual workforce. So that's the thing that you need to really nail down first and foremost. And you can do everything for like a, a very simple thing. You can you, you make a spreadsheet where you just list everything that you find that seems relevant and then you just check out like what seems to be relevant for you, what's interesting for you. Because you also have to remember that it's not just about knowing what's relevant in the workforce, it's also about finding something that feels like something that is interesting to you. Because one of the most fundamental things with being a programmer is that it it is a profession where a certain level of personal interest is very, very, well, let's call it desired because I mean, you can also of course get a job without actually being all that interested, but it's much more likely that you will get an empl employer to hire you if you show a le certain level of personal interest, right? So start by doing that. And then when you have a fairly high overview of what seems to be relevant, uh, you're going to find that Unfortunately, quite a lot of tools that are relevant are not necessarily listed uh, on the job postings because some tools are so basic or so core that they don't really mention them. An example is Git, like as version control. It is a all but an industry standard to use Git for, for this sort of stuff. So quite a lot of job postings won't actually list that as being something that you should know. Same little thing. Sometimes they mention, you know, the big, the, usually they mention the big tools in the job postings, but they may not mention everything. So it's sometimes it's kind of hard, I will admit. But for the most part, this is going to set you up for success. So now that you have a rough understanding, the next thing for you to check is, you know, yourself. How well do you actually know these tools? A good, like, rule of thumb here is that. If you can build serious applications with the tools that are required of you, then you should 
be pretty much ready to start considering at least getting a like starting to apply for some jobs but when i say like serious applications i'm not saying that you need to build facebook or something of this nature i'm saying that you should have a understanding of the tools that are requested of the by the employers and the companies and you should be able to be uh, able to produce results you should be able to build something meaningful not just a small little to do app or some toy thing where some where you do some very basic coding i'm saying that you should be able to build something that even though it doesn't it doesn't have to be super advanced it just has to prove that you have an understanding of how to build something meaningful, something that can be used in a real live environment, in a production environment, if you will. And that will depend a little bit on what, like, what you build and what, you know, what the actual thing that you uh, go, are going to consider to be good enough. Uh, that's going to be dependent, highly dependent on what field you want to go into. So if you're a front-end developer, you know, being able to create a real SBA application and like connect that to some type of backend and like doing all of this good stuff, that would be something that is pretty much at the right level. Full stack developers, you know, build the whole thing with the database, like a full fledged application and a backend developer in many senses also is that sort of person where you might go light on the UI, but you still create a full application because what's interesting for most employers is that you have a good understanding of the server and things of this nature. So that's pretty much that. Lastly, I can say that you should have one final check for yourself and that is to check how well do you know the basics of programming. And the way that you can check this is that you can go online and you can take a range of different coding challenges, different exercise, do different exercises, algorithmic problems, solving, sorting problems, things of this nature. It is not the most important thing in the world for you to be able to do this for job purposes. It's in real life, you are very, very unlikely to have to use quite a lot of these more advanced computer science concepts. But checking your knowledge of these will help you because some employers actually do go very heavy on this sort of testing. And it also shows to you, it shows you if you know you have a lack of understanding of some concept that feels that seems to be like or that we consider to be fairly simple i met developers who are able to use like the correct tools but they don't really have an understanding of basic concepts in say object-oriented programming like polymorphism or in, polymorphism or inheritance and that's the sort of thing that can be a bit of an issue when you look for a job so what I want you to take away from this is that if you want to know if you're ready to go out and take a job or start applying to jobs as a programmer, first things first, make sure that you have relevant skills in the workforce, go out on the job postings, look at what they are requesting and make sure that you have a good understanding of these tools. And the way you check that is basically, can you use these tools to build something meaningful? Not something simple like a little hello world application or a to-do application. I'm talking serious stuff, things that are actually value producing or things that could be used in a real environment. And then after you've done that, uh, go on back to basics and make sure that you are try testing out your ability to solve certain algorithmic problems just with pure logic, pure code, or just building algorithms, if you will because uh, quite a lot of com quite a few companies are going to value that skills those skills in you as well and probably ask you about those sort of sorts of things in an interview so that's going to be my answer have a great day